Hi guys and welcome back to episode 2 of Ugin's Insight. I'm your host Jordan and tonight I have joining me live in our luxurious living room. <laughs> we have uh, Adam. Hiya. Luke. Hello. And Chris. Oh dear. <laughs> So, uh, for our episode two, we are going to discuss the uh, recent Magic Pro Tour of Kaladesh and sort of just go through a couple of the top eight decks. And we're also going to go over our uh, GP London highlights that for the three out of the four of us who did go. Luke, you were let down. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get to that, we want to do sort of, that's a time on a tradition among most Magic podcasts, we want to crack a pack and uh, see what, what would be first pick. If it's not the rare <laughs> already. So what we have is we have obviously a pack of Kaladesh. One of my uh, winning packs from uh, GP London. One of my one of my hauls <laughs> that my you wife was rather impressed with. <laughs> you watch it, Chandra. Right. So. Invention. Yeah, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> Here's that Manavolt invention, you know, there you go. <laughs> Just, uh, that'll, that'll pay for it. Right, so first card, tidy conclusion. It's uh, instant, three and two black. Destroy target creature you gain. You gain one life for each artifact you control. Yep, fair yeah. decent. Yeah, yeah, quite nice for uh, good removal. draft play. Yeah, 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 definitely, good. definitely yeah. limited playable. I think, especially with the game one life. Oh yeah, well, you uh, gain one life for each yeah, yeah artifact. Sure. Yeah, it does come early. Second card is Sky Swirl Harrier, four and a white. It's a bird, three four, and it has flying. Very decently playable. Quite so, frankly, limited. I love flying cards in draft. That's the thing. I love playing blue white flyers when it comes down to Kaladesh or. Uh, this is. Severely playable, yeah. especially in current stat in current um, limited. It's yeah. like most other flying creatures, apart from the Ether Squall Ancient, don't touch mm -hmm. this. Yeah. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. something a lot of the time. Next one is Bastion Mastodon. It's five five mana cost artifact creature elephant. It's a four five. You pay white, and Bastion Mastodon gains vigilance until the end of the turn. It's not a bad big hitter for vigilance. It's as well. very. To, to, to be fair, this is playable even if you're not in white because yeah. a four five on five isn't bad. No. So I, I actually think even I, I mean yeah okay ideally you want the white so you get the vigilance and just keep pumping it for you know you know mm. so it doesn't tap. But I think it's not that bad actually. You know? Especially with the vigilance as well. Yeah. Okay, next one is uh, Kirio Vendor, one and a blue, Vidalcan, it's 2 1 vanilla. Not an amazing mm. card. I, yeah. I, I, I don't think I've ever played with this card <laughs> yet. <laughs> no. I, I, this might be, what, 24th pick? <laughs> well, normally, when you're taking a 2 drop, you generally want a 2 for a 2 2. So, you do, 2 mana for a 2 1. You want just... a bear, or I think you want at least a plus sign. Yeah. <laughs> you want it to do something at least. Uh, right, next one is a Dukara Scavenger, five and a black, crocodile, it's four six, when it enters, when it enters the battlefield you may put target artifact or creature from your graveyard on top of your library. Yes, playable. Okay. Yeah. Yep, mm. yep. Yeah, yeah. High cost, to be fair, I had a couple of these in a couple of my seal pools and they got C play some of the time, I could never find it when I wanted it, <laughs> but, yeah. it but it is playable I think. Ah, here we go. He's one of my favourites. Glint Sleeve Artisan. Two and a white. It's a dwarf art of set and it has Fabricate one and it's a 2-2. Two -two. Yep. Yeah, playable yeah, for a free yeah. drop slot all day long. In fact, to be fair, I think I probably fabricated for a servo like 80% of the time with this. Depends what deck you're playing. If you want the servers, mm. you want the artifacts mm. and yeah, definitely. That's the thing. I uh, think Fabricate's always very uh, situational. So mm. um, if you need a bigger zoo, put counter on him. If you need more bodies and go wide, then... Yeah. Um, yeah, so out. But definitely playable for a 3 yeah. mm. Weirwood Giant, four and a red, uh, four five with Menace. Yep, playable Game, in any, any red. Elephant, deck. really. Playable yeah. in any red deck, quite frankly, <laughs> especially in the limited. Oh, Wily Bandar. It's a one green. It's a one one. It's a cat monkey because th that makes sense. <laughs> 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 Two and a green, while it gains indestructible until the turn. I'm not a big fan of this card. Oh, I, I kind of am, and I'm not at the same time. I think, to be fair, someone did try and get it over on me by using this. It was turn five. They cast larger than life on it, swung with it, 
and then made it indestructible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, so you couldn't even do anything to destroy yeah. it. It was really annoying. And I was like, what? I just think the three mana for the indestructible was just a bit. It, it's to be fair. I think if it was one and a green, or even double, if it was double green, just to make it a little yeah. bit more awkward, just to give it indestructible, I think it'd be still, it'd be more playable. If it was double green, I think I'd yeah. have a different view on it. But, mm. but to be fair, the artwork's just weird. <laughs> it just doesn't look right either. I mean, come on. I don't look like a cat monkey to you. <laughs> <laughs> just don't know. Right. Uh, next common is a torch gauntlet. Two mana cost equipment. Um, equip each gets plus two plus four, and it has equip cost of two. Limited mm -hmm. mainly, I think. I I've never seen this played yeah. in limited. Yeah, I am. No, but... to, to be fair, someone I did see someone play. Um, play it, I think it was like every every equipment deck. It was this really weird deck where basically you have these creatures and you use it and you equip up equip up a creature with every single equipment it can get. It's, <laughs> it's really weird. I think it's just one of those filler cards if you haven't got enough in your uh, to, pool to, to play. Yeah, to be fair, as an just... artifact, it's not bad to have because it's always going to stay there yeah. unless it gets removed. Yeah. Sort of, unlike servos and other artifact creatures. Oh, here we go. This is this is my jam now. Built to smash for one red mana. Instant target attacking creature. Attacking is a key word on this card. <laughs> that needs to be read a few times. Gets plus three, plus three to the other turn. If it's an artifact creature, it also gets trample. Yeah, I've misread this card so many times. I've used it as a, as a as a. I'm going to save myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. This is your favourite card, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so. uh, Comboing combo it with the uh, Lone Rider, making it 4-4 four, four on go three, transform it. It's an absolute to, amazing To be guy. fair, this is this is like first pick of all the guy ranks. Uh, I, I would easily pick this first pick. I love it. It's such a good card. Right, so that's all the uh, commons out of the way. Now down to the uncommons. So we have Nature's Way for one green sorcery. Tag creature you controls gains vigilance and trample until the end turn. It also deals damage equal to its power to tag a creature you do not control. Ridiculously strong. It's very good. Yeah. The problem you've got is that you've got Hunt the Weak in this set as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you get confused. To be fair, I've nearly gotten confused while casting them and gone, I want to do. No, hang on. You know, you've got to re double check which one you're casting because they're very. Similarish artwork as well because I'm pretty sure Hunt the Week is the artwork before this one where it's the, the cat's coming down the tree to get this poor sod who's now getting eaten in nature's way. The thing is, in standard, there's quite a few cards like that um, nowadays, especially in the Shadows block. There was two, yeah, oh, punch two, cards, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there was, cards there was, um, yeah, there was a couple of bites. there's, yeah, Rabbit Bite and or what is it, uh, Mark, the... Mark of Hunt of the Moonlight or something, yeah, the Moonlight, one with the Moonlight, Moonlight, Hunt. Well. Moonlight Hunt, that's it, yeah. Yeah, there was those two that they both punch, not not fight, which is rather good. Hey, your favorite card, then. One of my favorite. This is this is a land that's going to go in every single deck the I build. Uncommon. The four dollar uncommon at the moment because it's so hard to actually open them. Ether Hub. It's a land. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you get an energy, and you it taps for colorless, or you can tap it and pay one energy and add any color of mana to your mana pool. Fantastic. Especially <laughs> yeah. for energy decks, it's ridiculous. Well, to be fair, not even just for energy decks. Is I actually think it's very playable just to fix you. Yeah. Like early game, yeah. just to get that fixing that you need. It's because how many times have you gone to try and cast, uh, cast Grasp of Darkness to get rid of a Silver Navigate, and you've only got one black on the field. Yeah. Like, Especially oh. when you've got the dual lands that come in tap by like the man lands. Yeah, yeah. Instead, you've just played this. Yeah. Play this. Yeah. Comes you, in untapped, yeah. and then you've got the color that you need. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth something. Yeah. Right. Last uncommon. I like this one. Ah, this is a very good card. Oval Chase Daredevil. Three and a black. It's human pilot. It's 4-2. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you may return Oval Chase Daredevil from your graveyard to your hand. This caught out so many people while I was playing it in sealed. Because, yeah. of course, I would swing in regards to like, yeah, fine, block, we trade. Yeah. I now play uh, Metal metal Works Puzzle Knot. <laughs> mm. I at least come back to hand. What? And this is like, yeah, read the card. It's, it's just, just the fact that it's any artifact. It's not, oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be an artifact. Servo, creature, equipment, just any artifact. Any artifact. Vehicle, yeah. it, it's fantastic. The only downside to it is the high mana to play it. It's four. If you're... On a four drop, but to be fair, it is a four two, and that crews like all the high cost vehicles. Yeah. Like, that's the Sky Sovereign. Uh, the Adara Express, all those really high cost ones, it can crew itself. Yeah. So it comes in, you crew so you crew the Adara, swing choo choo chime, you know. It's fantastic. So I yeah. Do, yeah, definitely good. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we got Embithic. <laughs> 
Our uh, mythic for the pack is Noxious Gay Hulk. Four and two black. Artifact creature to five four with menace. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy another target creature. If a creature you destroy this way, if if a creature is destroyed this way, you gain life equal to its toughness. Well, I know what the first pick is now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I potentially think this could be played if you can get a lot way of blinking your own creatures like with Eldrazi Displacer. That's uh right. Bring it off the battlefield. Bring it back on the mm -hmm. field. I'm going to destroy one of your creatures and gain some extra life, and you could keep. Well, blinking. to be fair, it's not um, only just the Eldrazi Displacer. There's um yeah, acrobatic, well, acrobatic maneuver in this yeah. set, which which blinks. And not only do you get to blink, and you could blink this thing and get more life, you also get to draw a card off Acrobatic Maneuver, which is just value <laughs> all day long. <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, but yeah, definitely first pickable. And uh, but apart, if I was to discount that, I think personally, I think I would be going into Overtaste Daredevil if they, if that would... wasn't in the if that Noxious Gayhawk wasn't in the pack. I would do probably do Nature's Way. You'd be in Nature's Way. All right, okay. I would have been barbed. Just because I would have, yeah. I would have had the, the mana just, fixing just, just for fixing for yeah, whatever straight away. Oh, okay. let, me, yeah. I mean, <laughs> let, let me guess, Adam, which card you're picking? Build to smash for the aggro. Yeah. To, uh, so out of these three uncommons, you're like, now nah, I want the build to smash. smash. Yeah. I already know you far too well. Oh right. dear. So yeah, so that is our first ever first pick. pick cracker, cracker pack. Cracker pack. Yeah. Maybe cracker pack. Yeah, we'll stick with cracker pack. Everyone else calls it cracker pack, so why not us? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not broke, don't fix it. Yes. That, like, yeah. Right, so to get down to the main topic of this podcast, we're going to discuss uh, a couple of the top eight decks. Uh, obviously, Pro Tour Kaladesh was just this weekend gone. And uh, yeah, it was. Um, I got to watch it all, uh, well, most of it. I think I missed like one round, I think it was round 12 or something like that, but you easily get caught up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so top eight. Um, wow, uh, they obviously have a new system now with the top eight. So to stop people conceding or, or to go into draws in like the last round, so they get, both get through. It now matters what your seed order is, if I remember right. So I think if you're if you're seed one and two, you only play two games, but right. then you immediately go through to the semis, yeah. sort of thing. If that's right, mm. which is obviously. Everyone, you know, obviously now pros aren't going. Oh no, let's draw. It's now yeah. no. <laughs> I want to play because I don't want to play four rounds, please. Uh, so, which obviously makes a hell of a lot more sense. So, first deck we'll discuss is Shota Yaso Yasaoka deck, which is Grixis Control. He obviously won the Pro Tour with this deck, and quite frankly, it was beautiful to watch. <laughs> Um, main thing about this is four things in the ice and two torrential gear hawks, and then he has twenty seven instants and sorceries. <laughs> you know because that's not greedy <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> and basically he was uh, using a mixture of creature removal, um, draw, card draw with glimmer of genius, um, harness lighting, the gates, painful truths. <laughs> I mean, this thing was actually a beautiful thing to watch. Um, he also was running Jason Alvarez Secrets for more card draw sort of thing, in fact. Um, in fact, the one time he was worried about this deck was in the finals because he was versing um, the next deck we'll discuss, which is Desk Guy Control, and he I think it was game one or two before the sideboard. I think he got down to eight cards in deck <laughs> because he was just drawing that much. And in fact, he was end up discarding, like he was discarding painful trees and to use anticipate instead. So he'd only draw one card instead of two or three sort of thing. It was, yeah. it was um, interesting to watch. <laughs> I mean, um, but yeah, I, I have to say it's an impressive deck, especially in terms of control. Mm. I mean, let's see. I mean, the torrential gay hawks obviously the new big star on the on the block anyway from everyone. I mean to be fair, I actually did didn't think it would be that big. I no, think, but I think no. after that it's the du virtuous gay hawks, the next only gay yeah. hawk that sort of made an impression. I don't know anything. The only else. thing is, I find this deck is that it is. Pr I feel like it's thing in ice or bust. Yeah. It to be fair, it was one of those things that, that when he was getting it out early game, it was amazing because he was. Once it was out, suddenly it was on the plan of right. Let's protect the let's protect it. Yeah, yeah. So he was keeping the gates up. He was basically, uh, he was basically a lot of the time he was like untap, pass the <coughs> turn. So he was always then, negate void shatter. It, there was one time where I think he cast, 
he actually casts Golvanic Bombardment onto his own thing in the eyes to remove a counter and negated it to remove the last counter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to, yeah. to, so, which I don't think I've ever seen in the proto where a guy targets his own creature <laughs> to then counter the ta- counter that spell. To he was like, what? I think with this deck, I think it was very much expecting. Everyone was expecting to play be playing aggro decks, especially with mm. the red white vehicles. Yeah. And this deck is pretty much counters any aggro deck. The fact that it's got card draw removal, mm. hand removal. However, yeah. I would argue if you can play the one drops with haste, like let's play village messenger, let's play Burmot courier, you can swing in straight away the go. You get the first two goes but, and. To be fair, so, he's prepared for that because obviously yeah. fingers in the ice is zero four. Yeah. That blocks yeah. a lot of them all day long. But not only that, he's got the galvanic bombardment, which pick off those a lot of the quick quick case creatures, like you mm. say, they're all quite weak <laughs> in yeah, terms of true. in terms of bodies on them, sort of thing. You know, they may have a bit of power and oomph behind well, them. One mana do two damage, isn't it? And then it yeah. multiplies if you've got yeah, I mean, like, but, I mean to be fair, it's only when you get to like thriving grubs and all these other ones that can actually get bigger, sort of thing. One yeah. Danger, I can see this deck hexproof. Now, mm. I've seen a couple of people with sort of deck like these. If you get a hexproof creature, you can then just go swing, 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 and they can't remove it off the to, field. To be fair, he was getting around that by keeping up multiple spells. So he, if he was going to cast Galvanic Bombardment, they would then go for hexproof mm. or something like that. And then he would cast another Galvanic Bombardment before it became hexproof to remove it. Yeah. So yeah. he was playing quite cleverly round things like that sort of thing, but some of the times he was struggling sort of thing. But yeah. it was sort of like things like Ormul Gloom which have net hexproof naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. To be fair, any natural creature that's got hexproof uh, yeah, it, this deck would struggle. But then again, he ends up having like in the sideboard, he has radiant flames, mm. which is a big sweeper. You know, if it, I mean to be fair, if he was in white, you just know he'd run fumigate for the same reason, or yeah. or, uh, or descend upon the same. I just noticed he's running to the slaughter as well. But in so. in the sideboard, he was also running three Weaver of Lightnings, mm. and that against aggro decks, I did not realize how good that card is, mm. because against the aggro deck, it's a one four body, and when you cast a spell, it deals one damage to target creature. Mm. How many? I mean, this thing was picking off veteran motorists. <laughs> how how, do you, how would you say this deck would compete against fly, like a flying flash sort of deck? Because that's the only other. Deck well, I the weaver of light. Well, the, the weaver of lightning has reach, so that gets around a lot of the spirits that fly in the air. Um, and again, because it pings off in terms of game one, it doesn't do too well against him. But he does have a lot of. You know, the Galvanic Bombardment's an instant. Harness Lightning's an instant. Uh, uh, what else? Inst- and License Disintegration's an instant. <laughs> you know, he was using Void Shatter to get rid of a lot of creatures. And yeah. he was always keeping up mana for, for mm. Counterspell. So opponents were always having to play around Counterspell. In fact, there was one game where he did Ultimate Jace. <laughs> I believe it was against Reduke as well. It was just like, oh... <laughs> It was like, you were just watching, you're like, oh man, that's painful. <laughs> I mean, I never want to be in the situation where you're at a GP or a Pro Tour and someone has ultimated the Planeswalker against you. Yeah. On the kitchen table in the pre-release, it's acceptable. <laughs> but if you're, at your, if you're at a GP, it's like, no. It was like last Pro Tour, wasn't it, with, I um, can't remember the player's name, but he ultimate Lil- Liliana. Mm. Whether it was the semi-final, was it the final? Oh, it was uh, Lucas... Bo- Bo- yeah. Bohan, Bohan, yeah, playing black white control. Yeah, and he was able to ultimate Liliana. And that yeah, was just... t- to to be fair, if anyone gets an Lily ultimate these days, it's it spells doom immediately. But yeah, right. Well, let's move on. So we'll go to the next uh, top eight deck, which is Jeskai Control. This was uh, piloted by Carlos Romano, who's had who's let's be honest had an amazing seven days because not only did he win GP Atlanta. Then he immediately gets flown out to go participate at Pro Tour Kaladesh. <laughs> <laughs> which, let's be honest, you know, so to go from, I don't know, Atlanta to Honolulu in Hawaii. Yeah, can't complain. Can't no, complain, quite no. frankly. I think it's rather sweet. But this is Jeskai control, so suddenly you don't have black. <laughs> which is interesting, because you think, actually, you would want to play with black, but his actually works quite well. His has a lot more... Because with white, suddenly he gets a lot more... Um, Sort of spot removal. Yeah. 
Definitely. I mean, he was the only creatures he was running. He was running two Archangel Avacyn and three Torrential Gear Hulks. Again, Gear Hulks were just amazing. Yeah. A lot of the time, you were seeing the Gear Hulks being played to get Glimmer of Genius off again, because mm-hmm. suddenly not having to pay four mana to draw Scry two and draw two and get two energy was an amazing thing. But uh, main differences you can see here: he has a few more anticipates. Um, Blessed Alliance, obviously, to make opponents sack creatures. Fumigates, it's quite self-explanatory why he's got a Fumigate in there. Uh, Harness Lightning, Immolating Glare, which is quite nice to see, because that's one of my favourite uh, two two draft cards. <laughs> it's, only, it's an uncommon, isn't it, as well? Immolating Glare? Yes, Im- I believe it is an uncommon. It is rather sweet. Um, what's interesting is, these these decks are playing red, but there's no, there's no Chandra's. Well... I, it's Chandra's too expensive. That's the six. thing. It was such a um, highly oh, anticipated yeah. Oh, yeah. card, but as you can see, he's playing Dovin Barn instead. To to be fair, Dovin Barn was so good in this deck, and it was it actually he actually got to ultimate in the finals with him against. But Shorter was only ever playing like two drops and then untapping yeah. the two things, so it, it just didn't bother him. But yeah, um, I think he did lose that game in the end because they came to they came to an ultimate mm. thing of I cast this counter counter counter. You know, it was just a, a mm. counter war in the air <laughs> in the ether, and it was rather interesting to watch. But yeah, but also in this is um, another <coughs> card that's quite a nice sequel. But in fact, I mentioned it in uh, my deck tech for prison deck, which is Quarantine Field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which is quite which I quite you know I quite like seeing that card in. I was like, yeah, suddenly that card's getting brought back. And I'm like, yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, st- only a one-off of Stasis now, which is quite interesting. I thought I would have expected to uh, see a couple more in there, yeah. but to be fair, it was, he was only using it as spot removal for mainly for gay hooks. You saw a lot of the time. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, but um, in the sideboard, um, ceremonious rejection, three Gideons. Well, because Gideon's just amazing anyway. Mm. He had a Limbauer as well in the sideboard, but Spell Queller was quite unique sort of thing. Mm. Again, Spellqueller is not going anywhere, I think, anytime soon. But yeah, I think it's being moved into the sideboard for a lot but of decks. Again, these decks seem like they're built to be to try and combat against the aggro decks uh, with the amount of spot removal, like you've said. To, to be fair, I think it was anticipated that after the SCG um, open, where everyone saw that, what was it, like four decks were red-white vehicles, yeah. it was yeah. like... There's probably a good chance a few pros will turn up with red white vehicles, which is understandable, you know, because they were they are fairly good. But to be fair, it has emerged that although Smuggler's Copter is amazing, Harness Lightning does take it down quite mm-hmm. easily. It's nice to <laughs> yeah. see that first and second place weren't playing any Smuggler's Copters. It, it it suddenly yeah it suddenly brings that card back to a bit of humility. I yeah. think mm-hmm. after after because after the open it went suddenly from. What was it, like a five dollar <coughs> card up to like twenty? It was yeah. nuts, man. I got I'm quite surprised they've used status snare and quarantine field. Because I'm just looking at quarantine field here. And obviously it's four drop for one creature. But then you have the opportunity to do more creatures. I'm wondering if you would have been better off there putting two quarantine fields in than using one quarantine field and one status snare. Just purely for the fact that you couldn't remove more creatures if you need to if you have the mana. yeah but but to remove more creatures you're talking about a very big mana sink i mean that's yeah. the only reason why i had one in my deck tech it's for late game you draw it and you're up against a board and you want to remove you will never ever maximize it to remove all the oh, creatures no. yeah but you go all right i'll take you you and you bye bye <laughs> <laughs> get oh. get in the field <laughs> yeah it's almost sort of like you can with it you get Whereas Stasis Snare, you can choose Planeswalkers as well. So Yeah, no. Um, yeah, you can do that with Quarantine Field. Yeah, Quarantine Field. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, no, no. Stasis Snare is creature hit creatures, only. Yeah, yeah. creature yeah. hit only. So, but I'm just thinking, because yeah. Stasis Snare is 4-drop, isn't it? Yeah, as a minimum, so, as a minimum, yeah. That so means... Quarantine Field is a 4-drop for one creature as well, but that's mm. any non-land permanent. Yeah. So I don't know if that was BB. That's my personal opinion. But, but I can see where you're yeah. coming from with it, but I, I think... Like me, I think they were like, no, it's because you only ever want to remove. Generally, most decks uh, that uh, you see in standard flash, at the moment yeah. have one key piece. Yeah. Like the Etherworks Marvel deck. That has, well, if they've got an Etherworks Marvel on the board, <coughs> you want rid of the Etherworks yeah. Marvel. <laughs> you know? yeah. Suddenly, they can't do what they want to do, sort of thing. You know, 
It's like that my prison deck. If you remove the authority of the consuls or uh, the um, Kambal, suddenly it doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, the, you know, so you've got to remove the key pieces. So I think that's the only reason why they did one. Okay. Right. For we'll only discuss one more deck, and so the top, well, third and fourth place are actually tied, and they're both Boros. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> red white. <laughs> Still made into the top eight, but he only had um, well, God, only had two know. decks. Only had two decks in the top eight, but one of them they they were both completely different, which is actually quite nice to see as well. Let's be honest. Yeah. Because God forbid, how many times have we ever watched Pro Tours and we see, oh, here's for here's top five deck, here's five of the eight decks, and they're all the same. <laughs> oh, fabulous! This is going to be interest entertaining to watch. Well. One of them is Boros Dwarf, so it uses the Pala. It's got vehicles in it. Uh, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, does it? Sky Sovereign. Yes, you know, it does have a couple of vehicles yeah, in it, but, but it's mainly well. using the Dwarf uh, Pilot Exemplar synergy for better vehicles, better dwarfs, and mm. swing big. What's a bit interesting, is what's quite nice to see, is Thraven Inspector. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Draven Inspector, the one drop from Shadows is still making waves in this game. I mean, the reason why a lot of people are using it is because, of course, it's great synergy with um, Toolcraft Exemplar, which is also in this list. Because you can drop that Toolcraft Exemplar turn one. Two, second drop, you can drop a Thraven Inspector. It gives you the artifact token clue, which mm-hmm. means that Toolcraft Exemplar is now a 3 2 uh, when yeah. it's swinging, which is good. But not only that, Thraven Inspector can pilot smuggler's copters. <laughs> well, I just think that's just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you've never seen technology <laughs> get in the hot, get in the chopper. <laughs> it's like I think when we did uh, my first, when we did the um, pre-release week weekend. Sorry, um, I had someone who had the thriving rats. Was it thriving rats? Piloting yeah, a, a train. <laughs> 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 just <rats> on a train. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't getting on no tree. <laughs> oh no! To be fair, it's like it's like when you see people like crewing <coughs> using like they'll play a Metal Gear Colossus, yeah. Metal Gear Colossus, and they crew a copter. And it's like yeah. no, it's like people. Oh yeah, he's gonna get into the copter. It's like no, no, no. It does what we all did as kids with Hot Wheels. It's like suddenly throw it across the throw it across the living room. That's what. So suddenly the Colossus goes like yeah, throw it. <laughs> That's all that happens. Oh, it's rather yeah. funny to imagine, but yeah. But yeah, there's suddenly just this pilgrim, sorry, this like peasant from yeah. uh, sort of medi- no, what would you class it as? Medieval, yeah, medieval, late exactly. medieval, this Renaissance sort yeah. of era is get in the helicopter, <laughs> <laughs> start flying it, please. He suddenly is like, hang on, there's a bit of a flavour here. There should be a little clause in all the vehicles in only Kaladesh creatures can pilot these. <laughs> but yeah, but um, obviously, yeah, it's got a Gideon in there as well. Sky, so- Sky Sovereign, because Sky Sovereign's awesome. Um, sideboard, there you go. You got, Chandra. Chandra. you got a Chandra in the sideboard there for you, Luke. I think yeah. that was the one Chandra for the whole top eight, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll yeah. have, um, have a look at I think Mardu vehicles might have. Shan, Shan, she, she Tian Lee might have had one or two in there. But um, this is actually the first time I've seen Fragmatize being mm, put yeah. anywhere. Sort of I thought Fragmatize would be everywhere, especially with Smuggler's Copters being out there, personally. I thought... I've- I think Fragmentize is more of a situational it, I think it'll but be... But to be uh, fair, it hits artifacts and enchantments of four mana or yeah, sort it's... of thing. And to be fair, against uh, if someone quarantine fields, yeah, X counts as zero. So quarantine oh, fields only... Oh. Quarantine fields only classes as a two mana enchantment. It's interesting though that green, inter- green wasn't played that often, I think, in the top eight. It's just yeah. the fact that the green has all the majority of the enchantment and artifact removal. Mm. Well, so, to be fair, I think it's got the better enchantment removal because the, what is it? Natural uh, state, isn't it? Natural state. There's mm-hmm. nat- natural state, but there's also... Oh, root out, root one out. drop. No. Root out. No, root drop. Uh, root out, uh, two drop. No, the um, one from Coloured. Appetite for the unnatural, yeah, that's it. Yeah, the one where... Life as well. Yeah, could you get life gain off it, and it's just, yes. Because you want, why Why wouldn't you want two life? I mean, it's only two life, but actually two life can be... As a temp for your health, normally. Yeah, yeah. It can actually it's, be one, helpful. One other thing I'm surprised, I've not seen any Nisses. As well, to be fair, I thought I'm with you. I thought, I thought, especially the newness, I expected to see a bit more of her. She's very defensive, actually, she's defensive and aggressive. You can mm. swing out for the aggressive, but you can mm. stay back for the defensive. But she's the perfect well. control card because she yeah. uses land as creatures, and so you don't have to put think, many creatures, yeah. In. But then when the, the land thing dies, is you get to revive any per, put any permanent back in hand. It's, it's almost like it's more <laughs> situational for. 
getting rid of all your cards in your deck and then just using it to, to, to get stuff out. To be fair, I think she works best in blue-green energy, and unfortunately, although there were a lot of blue-green energy cards being used mm -hmm. in different decks, there, there wasn't... A pure deck. A, 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 yeah, like a pure deck, as you say, that is blue-green energy. Because I think, unfortunately, blue-green's a little too slow. Yeah. Because especially when you compare it to... I mean, red green energy. Red so. green energy is really quick. I mean, my mono, the mono green standard deck that, um, that I play is also quite quick as well. Mm. Man, sometimes I wish I did have red in it at times, but it's like a bit only for like Voltaic Brawler or stuff like that. But yeah, but it's rather sweet. Right, so we'll leave it there because obviously we could probably discuss the next hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. On, quite frankly, on our top eight decks. So we'll just get over to uh, GP highlights. So we had a we had a good showing. We all of our all of our little posse. Four of us went to the uh, four of us went to the GP. Luke was there in spirits because he was uh, <laughs> messaging us every like five seconds. <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> it's like, oh. what'd you do? What what record you on? Have you had any nice players? <laughs> and then and then realise that you can actually look it up all online afterwards. Yes, yes exactly. I didn't realise you could do that. Uh, it, it was fine. It was uh, quite nice to have someone to chat to when I got locked out about <laughs> two o'clock. <laughs> yes, <laughs> unfortunately, our uh, group, we we had we had a, a, a bit of a sta staggers in terms of records for the day. Adam did very very bad. <laughs> <laughs> what was your record uh, again, Adam? Uh, I think no, I didn't win a game. Um, the, uh, <laughs> on the Saturday, I did not win a game. Of yeah. course, I went. Uh, I obviously didn't get to day two. Uh, I think that He's been around the bush. He went yeah. zero four, <laughs> zero, zero four. four for the day. I would like to state though, on the Sunday we played the Super <laughs> Sunday series. I did the best out of us four, so yes, doing best. Yes, okay. Yes. Uh, okay. But it still, it still means you're gonna get loaded over that you did a zero four at the GP. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't even win. We all set up with the same goal. One game, just one round. Next year. Next year. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> at least your goal's set easy for next year. Yeah. Like some of us, but yeah. Oh, I think I was the next one out, wasn't I? Yes, you were. Two, yeah, you were. a one, went two wins, four losses. Two and four? Two, oh, four? To be honest with you, I'm pretty pleased, considering that's my first GP I've been yep. that was. I'm pretty pleased how that went. Yep, no. Um, I, myself, went three and four. So I was out, I was out. Uh, I think, two rounds after you. You dropped yeah. two rounds before me, sort of thing. Yeah, so I went out two rounds later, but... I was actually quite knackered by then. I was actually going, because I'd already paid for Super, Super Sunday Series, and I was like, please knock me out. <laughs> and someone said, well, you know you can quit. And I went, I'm not quitting. Nah, wait, <laughs> nah, screw that. No way, man. I was not quitting that. I think <laughs> you went out of six. I must have went out of No, that. no, I didn't go. Yeah, I, no, I got knocked out. It was like half five at night I got knocked out. Yeah, cause I, my, I think I was about four o'clock when I dropped yeah. out. Oh, no, so you must have been around before then. I was like, yeah. yeah. Um, but Steve, unfortunately, he was not here. He had the running record out of the lot of us. He went four and four, so he lost on round eight, unfortunately. But let's be honest, it's better than losing on round nine. <laughs> <laughs> better than losing on round four. <laughs> <laughs> but it was um, uh, he, all in all, he had a great day as well. He was um, he was like me. He was getting. I felt when he was getting to the last few rounds, it is so mentally taxing at that point. And to be fair, I've forgotten how you shuffle more more than forty cards. Quite frankly, I can I I can, I can quickly shuffle a forty card deck with ease now. Whereas sixty cards, I know struggle. I'm like I, I feel like they I feel like I'm shuffling a commander deck at the moment. But yeah. But uh, no, it was very good to play a bit of limited, and it was a weekend, and we it's definitely an experience we're going to take. Uh, learning the rules and learning you know how a gp works and how it done professionally to mm. the standards yeah, no, no, no. friday I... night magic only goes up to a certain amount of standard rules wise you know there is very high standards at friday night magic but as rule sense it's probably more lax than you would say at oh, yeah 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 it's gp so... The rules enforcement's a lot better at <laughs> GP. I bet it's quite nice as well that you as you go judge and suddenly someone shambles over and he's like, Hello, it's like hot. Oh, oh the amount of calls we we have for judge <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> judge, judge. Yeah, oh, I can always guarantee they say go and within the two seconds you would hear the word judge. judge. Being there was there was always the second they say it, and you may begin and there was about a two second breath and then someone it's like I think me and my career and several points are like Seriously, what is that one person doing with their deck that requires a judge call immediately? 
Oh, dear. But yeah, it was it was certainly an experience. I mean, I went to um, I went to me and Steve both attended the Friday <coughs> as well. You know, so we were there for the entire weekend. Mm. Friday was very interesting. We did the last chance sealed. Uh, I pulled Static Orb, which I was ecstatic about. Actually, quite that was hilarious to play with. Let alone um, do things. Um, sold that for a bit of cash as well, which is quite nice. Um, that paid for some gobbles. Yay, gobbles! <laughs> um. But um, yeah, Friday was very good. It was good. It was good practice to actually sit down and act, yeah. do the actual GP of how do you sit here, mm. how do you fill in the deck form, and all that. Not that you brothers have to worry about anything. Seems you sat opposite each other. <laughs> <laughs> My only complaint with the GP was I don't think they gave people enough t- time to all fill out the forms. I noticed a lot, probably about ninety percent of people. We're still trying to fill out the I, form. I think I think it's one of those things. Unfortunately, the the only practice you get is by going to a GPT. Hey, yeah. And unfortunately for us, our GPT was shed over shadows over Innistrad. Yeah. And unfortunately, because it's flip cards <laughs> and because it was two sets. No, it was no, it was Eldritch Moon. That was it. It was Eldritch Moon GPT. Yeah. And because it's two sets, you have both sides to fill in. So there's you've got to fill them in. Yeah. So I think we were, you know, at the GPT, they were giving you a little bit of extra because you had to fill in both sides. Yeah. But it was certainly, um, it was certainly an experience, and I'm looking yeah. forward to uh, hitting another GP. I'm actually, I've been itching to look go to a foreign one at the beginning yeah. of the year, but um, I think I'm going to hold off on that, and uh, and uh, I might do. I'm, at the moment, I'm very tempted to go to <coughs> both both GP English GPs. I'm definitely want to do Liverpool. Yeah. I'm definitely want to yeah. do Limited. I'm definitely do Limited's Liverpool. the better one. In my opinion, because everyone's on an even playing field. I, I'm, I'd still like to do a standard one though. Just, just see. Well, take your own deck, see how your own deck does. Yeah, the against... Birmingham one is modern. I, so, I want to make a modern deck for that. To be fair, I, to be fair, I'm thinking of. I think I might actually go to the modern one, but I don't know if I want to go into the mo- uh, modern main event or just go win loads of ticks and walk out with loads of packs. I think the ticks option. <laughs> well, to be honest, I've only been playing for six months, so. I haven't got that many modern cards, so that would probably if I was yeah, to go you, down, I would you'd go have into to build, yeah, you need to build a deck. Side of it. Yeah. 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 And a, modern is I'm quite happy playing standard, I'm quite new to it, to, you know. To be fair, I really want to just go to the modern, actually enter the event with my nope deck. <laughs> <laughs> and just see players oh, please, and see and see players concede out of frustration <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> Because oh, uh, yeah, my my nope deck is uh, blue white. I'm not gonna let you play anything or let any of your creatures stick on the battlefield and just punish you for having life. That, that's fun. why I want to play Travis Woods all in goblins because I'm not good <coughs> on modern. Yeah. If, if as long as I don't have to make much interaction and I just have to you know turn three, I can win. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's there's it's lots of, of there are lots of options for it. Sort of thing, but it's very good. But anyway, we will close it out there because we've been rambling on for quite a bit now <laughs> as we all do when we actually end up talking about magic most of the time anyway so uh we'd like to say thank you for listening again um we hope to keep carrying this on we're gonna try and actually do it a bit regularly <laughs> and uh because it's i i actually quite enjoy doing this i, so I enjoy good. doing this yeah. maybe the next one we can talk about game day and because we've got game day this weekend and yeah there's so game day coming up um, yeah it's game day coming some up some other on. events coming up isn't there yeah, there's yeah. a well, there's also um, bits and bobs that we're gonna do, but we'll yeah. probably end up gonna be playing a few games and randomly anyway. But we'll end up discussing cool. things. Yeah. Right. So this is goodbye from Jordan. See you later. Goodbye. Take it easy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, remember to like. Uh, well, remember to subscribe to our podcast and uh, yeah, keep up to date. And yeah, catch you guys later. Thank you.